you look so good from here. Um, I'm so glad for this opportunity to stand before you and share God's word. Did you know anywhere, anybody who ever encountered God never remained the same? You cannot encounter God and remain the same. And this morning, because you came, and this is the house of God, he is here. Tell your neighbor, God is here. Ah, tell the other one who looks like she's taking you serious. Tell them, God is here. Tell them, you are not permitted to remain the same. Amen. Um, so I'm so glad this morning to stand here and share God's word with us. And uh, as you are aware, in the last number of Sundays, we have been studying and learning about the different, the several Christian disciplines. And let me tell you, the intention of all these is that you and me may become better, fruitful, and fulfilled believers. Did you hear what I said? The, the objective of us learning all these Christian disciplines is that you, it is a pruning, it is God aligning us so that you be fulfilled, that you and what God talks about you will be aligned. You know sometimes when you read how God is describing you and then you look at your life, you are two different people. The objective of learning God's word is that you and what God is saying about you, you will be the same. And let me tell you the disciplines we have been learning, they have been proven. The those who practice them never remain the same. So if you are the same, there is only one missing link and you can still salvage it, the practice aspect of it. And it is meant to help us become better ambassadors of the kingdom and of the good news. Therefore, this morning, I would want us to share from God's word. And today we want to tarry on the Christian discipline of meditation. And I've entitled my sharing this morning, Meditation and Encountering God Through Scriptures. You interact with the word of God, you encounter God, and your life is transformed. Encountering God through scriptures. And remember, as I said, it will only happen if you will learn like you are going to learn this morning. You will learn, have the head knowledge, and then the head knowledge will move from the head to the heart, and then from the heart to the hand. I've just said it moves from the head to the heart and then to the hands. What do I mean? Even salvation, which we are so happy that Jesus paid it all. The Bible says that we had, we believed with our hearts, and then we confessed, and then we possessed it. So even all the, learn, the learning we are doing, I want to invite you one more time this morning in the next few minutes and let us allow ourselves to learn, then allow the word to convict us, and then we change. By the way, what the, the hearts will do will, may be different from each one of us because the word will find you where you are. The word will not leave you where it finds you. So today we learn about meditation, encountering God through the scriptures. And we are going to tarry on two main scriptures, but before we read them, maybe you can project for us John 6, verse 63 in New King James. John chapter 6, verse 63, the Bible says, It is the Spirit who gives life, the fresh prophets nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirits and they are life. This morning, the words we are about to read, they are life. Therefore, as you sit down to listen to God's word, may that which is dying in your life be given life. May that which has never arisen be given life by the word of God. This is Jesus who was saying that the words he is speaking are life. Therefore, right now, you are about to encounter life. 
I pray that the hearts, the dreams that which are about to die will be resurrected by the word of God. And we are talking about encountering God through the scriptures. Project for us, Psalms chapter 1, and we are going to read verse 1 to 3 in amplified version. And because it's early in the morning, you'll help me read. So let's read and read with an attitude. The attitude of reading to understand. Remember, our topic this morning is meditation. By the way, you cannot meditate in a hurry. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot meditate in a hurry. It seems it's slowing down. You read and you hear yourself read. And then you ask yourself, what am I reading? Okay, so let's go. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculous. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. Verse 3. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruits in its season, its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. The word starts by describing that man. Project for us, verse 1. And all those names, I am sure that's why you came. You would want to be described as a blessed person. Do I have somebody who is desiring to be called the blessed of the Lord? That when they forget about your name, they say that blessed man, that blessed lady. Do I have a witness in the house? So the Bible says, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. All those are names you'd want to go behind you. True or true? But for you to gain any of those names, then we are linked to the key of you getting to be described that way in verse 1. Let's read verse 2, because that's where the key. They want to, the, the Bible wants to whet your appetite, because we all want to be prosperous. We all want to be called we are fortunate. We all want to be called we are blessed. We all want to bear fruit. Am I talking about you? Am I describing you? You would want to be called prosperous. Come on, speak to me. Is that you? Oh yeah, here is the key. For you to be called what you have just read, the Bible says, your delight and my delight has to be in the law of the Lord and on his law, his precepts and his teachings we habitually meditate day and night. I loved this, inter uh, this Bible version because of the word habit. When we are talking about day and night, it has to be a habit. Did you know a good habit? You know, and it is true in the natural, it is true in the spirit. When we used to live in Zimmerman, and then we relocated to Kawasukari, Several times, we came to turn around at the base. Because it was our habit. When we come from town, we just, when we get to reserve, we turn where? And because it had been a habit for many years, to break that habit, several times, we had to come, then, ah, this is no longer home. We turn, and we take superhighway, which takes us to Kahawasukari. When you make it a habit to read the word of God, you will, only feel, you will even feel funny. You will feel like there is something you have forgotten. Do you know the way you feel inadequate when you forget your phone? Am I talking about you? Imagine I've just said that. When you forget your phone, you cannot afford to spend a day without a phone. I pray that we will become, we will cultivate that habit of reading God's word so much that you will feel you are incomplete because you have not yet read the word of God. Because that becomes the link with that which would all of us want to be. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, 
his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. And then verse 3. Verse 3 says, After you do that, now you have earned the name. Again, this one is so sweet in our ears. And you will be, tell your neighbor, I will be. You know, maybe you came and you're asking, what is there for me? There is something for you in the house of God. You will be like a tree, firmly planted and fed. Did you know you can be planted and not be fed? If you are planted and you are not being fed, you will be dry. You will have no life. People will wonder, are you dead or alive? Have you ever seen some trees, depending on the season, which you think and you look at them and they look dry? And for those of us who are brought near the forest, those who are the kind of trees our parents used to tell us, that we go to the forester. <laughs> you go to the forester and ask for permission to fell firewood because the tree looks dry. Until you cut it and you realize it's not dry. That shall not be you. Because you'll be fed from the word of God. You will be like verse 3 in Jesus' name. Can we project it for us, verse 3? And you will be like a tree. Family planted and fed by streams of water. Hold it. Streams of water, the word of God. And because you are not in a hurry, you are turning there, meditating, seeking what you can pull from the word. And then it turns your life around until you become prosperous and blessed and fortunate in Jesus' name. Which yields its fruit in this season and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. Do I have people in the house who have tried many things and they have failed? I have got good news this morning that you can turn in the word of God and find the secrets in the word of God. Fortunately, you can only identify the secrets by telling there and asking the Lord to minister to you. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This was a charge to Joshua by God himself. When uh, Moses died, God needed to, co to commission Joshua. And amongst the many things he told Joshua, in verse 8, he told Joshua, this book, do you have a Bible or it is a phone? Tell your neighbor this book. Never mind, we know it is in the, in the phone. It is our too. This book, See your book, you can buy your phone. And let me tell you, in the house of God, there will be many things you look, they look childish. But imagine they work. So this book, project the verse for us. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I want you to note the word mouth. Eh? But you shall read and meditate on. Some of us add our reading at the reading. And he meditate on it day and night again. I want you, you to see the consequence. So that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will be successful. Do I have people in the house who would want to be prosperous? Are you in the house you would want to be successful? There is a formula. And the good thing is that all of us can understand the formula. I know in school, some of the formulas, thank God we have teachers of mathematics, but some of us mathematics, we were not cut from that wood. We were not cut, cut from that rock. But let me tell you, in the kingdom, because you can get the word, even my, our mothers who don't know how to read, they can reason. And because they reason intentionally, you will go home and they'll start telling you. Like the word says, they have never gone to a classroom. But they know what the word says. Because they were meditating, all of us can understand the formula. The formula of hearing. Or you read, you hear it. Blessed are you, you can read. So you hear it twice. For those who don't know, how to read. They only hear it if somebody shares with them. But for you, you can read. You can hear. And once you hear, don't be in a hurry to get through. 
you start it there and ask yourselves a few questions. So, very quickly, I want to talk about three, three ways, or is it, should I say, there is a process of meditation. For us to become successful, prosperous, and everything we do will succeed, to become fortunate, blessed, you know all those sweet words. It's reminding me of that song, Majina Yote Mazuri Niyako. Did you know all the good names are our God? You can call him that which you need him for this morning. And may it come to pass. So step one. We are, remember we are talking about meditating upon God's word. Step one. Read the scriptures. If you are here and you can read. When you don't read, there is no difference between you and your grandmother who doesn't know how to read. You are all in the same classroom. Tell your neighbor, I'm moving from that class because by God's grace I can read. Do I have people who are relocating from that class? Are you a classmate with your grandmother who never went to school? Look at your neighbor whether she looks like they're in the same class. Are you classmates with your grandfather? Hey, Tunahama Leo, I want you, if you forget everything, next time a day Mu goes and you have not yet read, you remember, you have decided to go back and you are classmates with your grandmother. But you know, not all grandmothers don't want to read. I'm a grandmother and I can read. But you know what I mean. If you know, you know. You do? All right. Read the scriptures. I know you have heard this enough times. Read the verse or verses slowly and several times. Now we are moving from reading. Thinking seriously about what you are reading. Look for... Key phrases and words. Did you know when we read the verses, I was speaking some words. I talked about prosperous. I talked about successful. I talked about being blessed. I talked about being fortunate. As you read the scriptures, don't be in a hurry. You check the words, and especially that those that are relating to what you need from God. Because that is the link to your prosperity. Focus on what you are reading and what it may mean. Think on other ways to say it. Notice how specific words may be emphasized or repeated and how that affects the meaning of the verse. And then after that, write down any insights, thoughts, lessons, and revelations. The advantage of reading, meditating, and writing, you are giving yourselves an opportunity, an opportunity to hear it three times. The first time you read. The second time you read there. And then you write down what you read. You can't be the same with the one who read to finish so that your conscience doesn't tell you today you have not read the Bible. By the way, when you read and you can't remember what you read, there is no difference between you and that person who has not read again. So there has to be a difference. Meditation will be the difference. And remember, why we read the Bible today is because somebody wrote some insights they got or they were instructed by God. Romans 15 verse 4, it says, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Somebody wrote the insights. And even in the book of Revelation, the Bible keeps on saying that the Spirit would tell John, now write, write to this church, write, he had, and then he wrote. So, as you, med as you read and meditate, it is godly to write down. So read and write. Tell your neighbor, read, meditate, write. I like that verse in the message version. It says... Even if it was written in the scripture long ago, you can be sure it is written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. I loved when it says, to come to characterize us, shaping your character. When you meditate, the word shapes your character, keeping you and me alert 
for whatever he will do next. So when you fail to meditate, you miss an opportunity to be aligned with the will of God. And as I said, hear it twice, hear it, then write it. Step two, now we have read. Tell your neighbor we have read. I'm not permitting anybody to leave me in the house of God alone. So we'll keep talking. And I'm saying, now we have read the scripture. Tell your neighbor we have read the scripture. We have tarried there. Step two, talk to yourself about what you have read. Talk to yourself about what you have read. In other words, relate the leading to yourself, your situation, and your circumstance. We, we talked about reading, now we are talking about relating. Relating the word with me. Did you know you are in a different space than me? So if you are sick, you pick the word and you relate it to your health. If you are broke and the word is saying you'll be successful, whatever you do, and your business corrupts, you tell God this is out of order. You have to show me where I'm missing the ring. My business must work or work. Relating with the word according to your circumstance or situation. Identify how you can apply the scripture. If it is a promise, claim it. Allow the word to shape you, your beliefs, your values, your words, your character. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, if you can put it here, all scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction. Can we read together? Conviction of sin for correction of error and restoration to obedience. For training in righteousness, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. Hold it there. When you are in, remember we said encountering God through the scripture. When you encounter and you are not in a hurry, you are turning there. The scripture, because it originates from God, it will do all those things. There will be instruction, there will be reproof, there will be conviction, there will be correction, discipline in obedience, training in righteousness. All those things, you'll find them in the word. The same verse in the message version. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, Correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. So when you are interacting, it's like you are, you are on a mirror. It is shaping you. When you go to the mirror and you discover your color is upside down, that reminds me when you were growing up and there was no electricity, sometimes you'd wake up and wear a sweater inside out. And now when you meet with the other children, when you're going to school, they would tell you, your, your, your sweater is inside out. Do I have somebody like that? Oh, it's just me. Where to steamer in gear too just the other day. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy it found me when I was alive. We are talking about relating the word of God with our current situation. Allow the word to mark your boundaries. That's what we have just run, read. Because after we align ourselves with the word, remember we read, we shall be fruitful. Fruit growing is an inner work. It is because of the work that has happened inside your view that now you become, you glow and you become fruitful and you become prosperous and you become successful. And I know you all came here, we'd all want to be that. A believer without stock of the, of the word of God are powerless and defenseless. Because when you take that word and hide it in your heart, like the Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 11, your word I have treasured and stored in my heart that time may not sin against you. Treasuring the word of God, you read it, it blessed you, you treasure it, 
and store it. Tell your neighbor, treasure it and store it in your heart. I, we must speak in the house of God. Tell the other neighbor, even if they are acting like they are so focused on the screen, just tell them, I'm telling you, treasure it and store it. And treasuring and storing is not enough. The same chapter, Psalms 119 verse 15 says, this is David who was saying, I will, let's read together, I will meditate on your precepts and not free regard your ways, the path of life established by your precepts. In other words, when you are relating yourself with that word, the, interest, the good thing is this, you may even remember a song that is relating with that verse. Have you ever read the word of God? It reminds you of that song you learned in Sunday school and you are reading the Bible. By the time you are waking there, you wake up singing a song. Because you are trying to relate with the word. Meditation. You around the word. You create the space that the word of God may speak to you. And finally, step, step three. Talk to God about it. We have read. We have related. Now, talk to God. Respond to God. Respond. In other words, I have talked about reading, I've talked about relating, and I'm talking about responding. Respond to the word. Ask for divine intervention. Align, deep, apply, and come up with an action plan. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you. Remember what the Bible says in John 15 verse 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Unless God helps you to apply that word, you will do nothing. And as I wind up, I want to talk about benefits of meditation. 2 Timothy 2.7 says, reflect on what I am saying. This is Paul who was saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. When you meditate on the word of God, you get insights. He gives more insights of his word, which enhances your intimacy with him. And I want to associate reflections to what a cow does. As you can tell from now, from what I'm talking, I was brought up up country. So what I used to relate with were the cows. And you would watch the cows, they would go and eat a lot of grass, then they would lie down and they start chewing the cud. They were never in a hurry. They would burp up the grass they swallowed in a hurry. And they would one more time push it on different sides until they are able to pull out all the nutrients from the grass. That is what you are supposed to do. Chew it. Send it. You are wondering how to meditate? I've got good news. If you know how to worry, you already know how to meditate. Because worry is simply negative meditation. So if you can convert the worrying and let it become positive and meditate on the word instead of the challenges facing you, you are already good to go. You are able to meditate. I told you, the classroom of God, we cannot be classmates. Meditation. You know how to worry? You can meditate. Benefit number two, and I'm deriving it from the verse we read in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. When we read the word, it enhances our obedience. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Why? So that you may be careful to do everything written on it. When you meditate, obedience is enhanced. Benefit number three. Prosperity and success. From the same verse, part B says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. And I want you to note something here. It is you, not God, who is making the way to prosperity and success through obedience. Tell your neighbor, it's not God, it is you. When you choose obedience, you're already in the path. 
And then as you obey, God causes you to be prosperous and to be successful. And you will not, there is a concept, there is a chain of effect. We are talking you meditate, obedience, prosperity, success. Majority of us want to start from the head. We want success and prosperity. But you don't want to meditate and obey. And, and obey. It has to follow the sequence. The sequence. Meditate, obey, then you will prosper and you will be successful. Did I just hear you say that you would want to be successful? Did I just hear you say you would want to be prosperous? Ah, I want you to start the line from the very end. You read the word, meditate on it, obey the word, allow it, relate with the word. Then prosperity and success will become the end product. Benefit number four, you are, the word as you meditate makes you wise. In other words, when you meditate, you acquire divine wisdom. Psalms 119 verse 98 says, Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. Do you want to be wiser than your enemy? Somebody talks to you and the Holy Spirit whispers to you, this is a trap. Do not respond. Sometimes you are loudest when you are quiet. I love the kingdom. It looks like it works opposite several times. You are loudest when you are quiet? Yes, because the word makes you wiser than your enemy. Second Timothy 3.15. This is Paul who was telling Timothy. And that from a child thou hast known the, only, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The word of God, when you meditate and you agree and allow yourself to operate within the wisdom of the word of God, you become a wise brother. So, divine wisdom. And then, finally, when you read, you read it, you obtain guidance and protection. Psalms chapter 1 verse 6. If you can, yeah. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Hold the verse there. When you practice the word of God, you become godly. And you automatically qualify to engage God to watch over you. He becomes your protection. The Lord watches over the path of the godly. You can never be godly when you are not practicing godliness. And practicing godliness is practicing the word of God. You read it. Relate with it and see how you can apply it. When you apply, you are already in the, on the right boundaries and you qualify for the Lord to watch over you. There is one, verse, one, one translation which said the same verse. The righteous are guided and protected by the Lord, but the evil are on the way to their doom. That is good news translation. The righteous are guided and protected. You can never be righteous when you don't know. You become righteous because you are doing the right thing. The right thing is the word of God. You meditate and see how it is relating to you, where you are, what you, with what you do. You align yourself. Then protection and guidance becomes your portion. So what have, I, what have I been trying to say? Take the time now and, and develop the habit of meditating on God's word and you will reap the benefits for the rest of your life. Meditation is not digestion. Meditation is not digestion. God wants us to get every ounce of spiritual nutrition out of his word. He wants us to chew on it digest it, and then chew on it some more and have enough of his word. By deliberately going through the pages of the Bible and staying on the same, you begin to find out what is yours through faith in Christ Jesus. Healing, prosperity, security, protection, and so on. And that is why the Bible says that the word becomes the sword. And you know you don't go everywhere with a sword. 
You only remove a sword when there is danger. So you are able to encounter your situation by drawing from the word you read, you meditated, you treasured, and hid it in your heart. And in the time of need, you are able to draw it and use it as a weapon. As you feed on the written word, the truth in it will come alive to you. This right that you receive in your heart will cause you to experience the divine security that is your right in Christ. And enforcing your victory will become easy. To meditate, you have to physically slow down. Did you hear what I just said? You physically slow down. Mysteries of the kingdom, success, when slowing down, you know, there are some, some, some descriptions of spiritual issues that contradict the physical. For example, that you can, be, you can look very wise when you are silent. You are tallest on your knees. Tallest on your knees? Oh, let me come closer. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. You know that it looks contradictory, but those are the mysteries for the kingdom. So if you forget what I was saying, I'm saying, in conclusion, Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Read, meditate, read, read it, and respond. You will make your way prosperous. No shortcuts. I know we would all want to be prosperous. We would all want to be covered by the Lord. But you are the one who decides whether you want it or not as you operate within the boundaries of the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, we came to your house this morning. We came to encounter with your word. And this morning, Lord, you have reminded us that you have given us the ability, we can read. You want us to tarry and relate the word and then respond to the word. I pray that everyone that has listened to me, dear Father, will pick something, run with it, and become better. A better believer. Showing for the fruits of a believer. And maybe you are there. We are talking about reading the word and relating with the word. And you have never given your life to Jesus. Meaning you are already outside the boundaries of the prosperity we are talking about, of the success we are talking about. Maybe you are there. You have never given your life to Jesus. And this morning, because that is a starting point, you would want to give your life to Jesus. We would love to pray with you. Are you there? And you would want to give your life to Jesus. If you Lift up your hand, I'll see it from where you are, and we are going to pray for you. Are you there? You came to church, and you want to start afresh today. Are you there? Just lift up your hand. Thank you for that hand. Stand up. Come on, my sister. You can walk to the front. You want to pray for you. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus. And you want to join my sister here. If you lift up your hand, we are going to see it, and we are going to pray for you. Can they come here? Somebody would love to pray with you. You are there. You would want to give your life to Jesus. This is a turning. No, just here. Study my sister. Here. This pastor wants to pray with you. This is a turning point for my sister. And you are welcome to come and join my sister. Are you there? We don't want to exert our self-pressure. This is a change of destiny. She walked out, walked in a sinner. She's walking out a saint. That can only be in God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. Because God, my sister cannot encounter your word and remain the same. And today she has decided to turn around her life. 
And Lord, I want you, brethren, to lift up your hands towards my sister, even as we speak a breakthrough in her life. Father, in Jesus' name, we are saying and declaring that this is a change of destiny. This is a turnaround in her life, in her family. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it shall be permanent. We declare that generations after her will be changed because you are making her a generation changer. We honor you this morning. We bless you because you, we can count on your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's celebrate Jesus!